Hi everyone and welcome to day nine of QRM Malformation Awareness Month. My name is Caitlin and today I will be doing my QRA testimonial. So I was diagnosed the day before I turned 16 years old. Uh, before that I had been having headaches between my junior and senior year, not junior and senior, my freshman and sophomore year. I was having headaches over the summer and I just took Advil for it and it was fine. It went away. No big deal. And then it got steadily worse leading up to my school's 9-11 ceremony. Uh, what ended up happening is I was a part of the color guard, not color guard. I was a part of the formation for the 9-11 ceremony. I was in full BDU. I was in front of my squad because at that time I was a staff sergeant and I was in charge of my squad and we were all standing there ready and I ended up my vision went white in the middle of the ceremony and so I had to fall out of formation and try to get my sight back and then for the rest of the day I was overly dizzy for the next two weeks I was out of school to the point where I was this close to effing just for the fact that I wasn't there but I could barely get up off my couch I was so dizzy let alone do anything else for that matter um, my boyfriend at the time was bringing my homework back to me and was taking it back to school for me so I was keeping up with that but it was hard to try and keep that up it was hard to I mean, sit up long enough to do homework, let alone anything else. I was basically inca incapacitated. Finally, I got in to see an ENT, which is an ear, nose, and throat doctor, uh, to see if the dizziness was caused by damage to my eardrums. And so he sent me on, it was September something, that he sent me in to go get an MRI with contrast. And I believe it was a Friday that I got the MRI. And then over the weekend, it was fine. It was chill. And then come Monday, I go to school. I'm in uniform. And it's October 1st. I come home from school, and my mom tells me to go change it on my uniform. She needs to talk to me. They had gotten the results from my MRI back. And she looks at me, and she's like, you have a condition called Chiari malformation, type 1. I had no idea what that meant, um, and I was terrified, but I was also pretty um, okay with the fact, because I was like, oh, well, at least it's not a brain tumor, um, which is what I was starting to think it was, because nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. Um, the following, basically, we looked up what the treatment was, and we saw that the, basically the only two options were surgery or pain management, which basically meant that I was going to be in and out of school for the entirety of the rest of my sophomore year. And this was really hard for me because my sophomore year, everything seemed to be finally clicking into place. And then this whammy hit me and it was like I was losing everything. So the next day, October 2nd, on my 16th birthday, I went to my high school and I withdrew from my sophomore year and I went to online classes. That way I could focus on my treatment while at the same time continuing my school. And, and this was hard. This was very hard for me because I'm a very social person and I basically cut myself off from the world by doing that. And, and it was it was very hard, but what ended up happening is in November, we got in to see the neurosurgeon and she basically looked at me and she said, your cerebellum tonsil is seven millimeters past where it's supposed to be. You need to have surgery ASAP or it could possibly kill you. Um, saying this to a 16 year old, it's kind of a shocking thing to be told, 
it's very, very hard to go through. Um, and I mean, it was astonishing because she looked at me like I was, like I had all the answers, like it was my choice. And she said, we can do one of two things. We can do surgery on December 11th or we can wait till after Christmas. And my parents being the wonderful people they are left the decision up to me. And I looked at her and I said, I am in so much pain. I need this done now. And so it was scheduled for the next week. Um, And I went in and I was terrified. I mean, it was absolutely terrifying to go in. Um, These photos right here. Those were me in the hotel the night before uh, my surgery. So we get up at 5 a.m. And we drive over to the hospital because we'd stayed the night in Orlando. And we go in and we wait. And they get me all set up. They get me in the gown and all of that. And then they start to do the anesthesia and all of that. And the guy looks at me and he says, do you think you're starting to feel it? I said, no but I'm sure I will soon. And the last thing I remember is looking back at my mom and seeing her crying and going through these double doors into, I'm assuming where they have all of the surgery rooms before I don't remember anything else. Next thing I know, I wake up in my room. And it was interesting because apparently I was very grumpy coming out of the, uh, out from under the anesthesia. Um, because I was dead set on once they took the catheter out, I was getting up to go to the bathroom. There was nothing about it. Somebody was going to help me do it. And so I stood up or they helped me stand up literally two hours out of having cranial and spinal surgery. Cause what they did is they went in and they took out a two by two millimeter square of my skull and shaved down my C1 vertebrae. And so they went in and they took that out and, um, and less than two hours later, I was like, somebody's going to help me get up to use the bathroom. So they brought that little portable, um, toilet thing out and I was, they helped me sit, stand up and sit down on it. I didn't actually have to go. It was just the fact that the catheter had been taken out and I did almost vomit, but I was determined. (laughs) And my doctor came in and saw me later that night and let me know that if I could stand and walk for a short distance on my own, manage my pain with pain medicine and eat, then I could go home. And so that was my goal to do within the next 24 hours because I did not want to stay in the hospital. I hate hospitals. Um, the next day, some super important um, sports people came and were doing sort of like a charity golf thing at the hospital. And my mom was more excited about it than I was because she got to meet some of her like heroes. Um, these are the photos for that. And then within 24 hours of getting back to my room, I was able to leave. And I went home from the hospital. And then the next couple of months were rough. Recovery was rough. But I did get a job uh, at Carmack Cinemas was my first job. They don't really exist anymore. They got bought out by AMC. But that was my first job. And... Everything was great until about six months after my surgery. Um, I did something very stupid. I managed to um, malnourish myself by working two jobs and everything. And I passed out and hit my head against a wall at work. And it caused me to be in and out of the hospital for like a weekend. And for two months, I wasn't allowed to work until I got all cleared by my doctor. Which, trying to get in to see a neurosurgeon is not easy. And so, 
this surgery was supposed to fix everything for me and it didn't um it was supposed to get rid of the shrinks in my spine but it didn't it was supposed to get rid of my symptoms but it didn't i still have headaches constantly um my stringomelia causes severe pain and weakness in my arms and legs i get blurry vision at times and sometimes the pain can be excruciating i do still go to work um i do i'm a teaching assistant which is more than I can say for a lot of people. A lot of people are not as lucky. So I take pride in the fact that I am lucky enough to be able to still continue to have a job. Um, I do have to use a wheelchair when I go anywhere for long distances, like Disney, or if I'm going on an extended shopping trip at Walmart, I do need to use a wheelchair or an electric cart. Um... I do have days where the pain is just so excruciating that I curl up in a ball and I can't do anything about it. Um, what I want you guys to take from this story is that Chiari needs to be something people are more aware of. There are barely any neurosurgeons in the area, in Florida as is, who know about Chiari, especially for adults. And anytime I go to the hospital for anything, I tell them I have Chiari malformation, especially after car accidents, because anytime you get in a car accident with Chiari, you have to go to the hospital. It's like a must do because something could have burst, even if it was just a simple car accident where you got whiplash. Um, and having to explain again and again and again and again what your condition is, it's exhausting and it's tiring and it can really wear on a person. So, just keep that in mind. I want you guys to keep looking for these videos. I will be doing testimonials the rest of this month from fellow Kiari warriors, as well as some of my own friends and family members, so that you can hear what it's like um, more and get more information about it. Please share these videos. Please extend these videos out so that everybody can see exactly what... Uh, what, what it is this condition does to a person and please share these stories these warriors have been through it we've all lived through it these are their testimonials and their stories are probably the most important thing to them because it is their way of showing you what they're going through so please follow these videos and i will see you guys tomorrow bye